While Peter was still speaking these words, the Holy Spirit came on all who heard the message. The circumcised believers who had come with Peter were astonished that the gift of the Holy Spirit had been poured out, even on the Gentiles. For they heard them speaking in tongues and praising God. Then Peter said, Can anyone keep these people from being baptized with water? They have received the Holy Spirit, just as we have. So he ordered that they be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Then they asked Peter to stay with them for a few days. It's incredible, isn't it, that the more you read scripture, the more you realize that the whole of the Bible is about inclusive. It's not exclusive, it's about including. Martin spoke last week about it, and this passage highlights again how God's family is inclusive of all. We, who would have been considered Gentiles at this time, are welcome into the body of Christ. Isn't that amazing? It's about everybody being in rather than keeping people out. Inclusive including drawing to himself. And the thing that strikes me when I read this passage, and it happens today as it did then, the believers, the circumcised believers, were astonished that even the Gentiles could receive the Holy Spirit. That's like us saying, even the Baptists know Jesus. How come? They've got it wrong. This bit's wrong, that bit's wrong. But actually, if we focus on the foundation of our faith, if we focus on the cornerstone that is Jesus, it unites, it doesn't divide. And in a world that is so fractured, that is so important to lay hold of. If we could just focus on what unites us rather than divides us. We're going to move on to the second reading, um, which is uh, 1 John 5, verses 1 to 6, which you'll find on page 1228. Verses 1 to 6. That read, everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ is born of God, and everyone who loves the Father loves his child as well. This is how we know that we love the children of God, by loving God and carrying out his commands. This is love for God, to obey his commands. And his commands are not burdensome. For everyone born of God overcomes the world. This is the victory that has overcome the world, even our faith. Who is it that overcomes the world? Only he who believes that Jesus is the Son of God. This is the one who came by water and blood, Jesus Christ. He did not come by water only, but by water and blood. And it is the Spirit who testifies because the spirit is the truth everyone not a select few everyone inclusive this is love for God to obey his commands and his commands are not burdensome if we follow the rule book we can change the world We can literally change the world. If I do my bit and add it to your bit, it becomes a bigger bit with a bigger impact and we can change the world. Everyone. Everyone is invited. Everyone can be included. The Gospel reading is... um, from John chapter 15 following on from where we left off last week Um, 
on page 1083 in the Church Bibles from verse 9 to 17. So last week we had the section prior to this that talks about the vine and the branches and uh, Martin talked about pruning and cutting away dead wood and that sometimes to grow we have to be cut, we have to be cut back. Um, It's important to know that that precedes this because this makes a lot more sense if it's positioned within the beginning of the chapter. So reading from verse 9. As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Now remain in my love. If you obey my commands, you will remain in my love, just as I have obeyed my Father's commands and remain in his love. I have told you this so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. My command is this. Love each other as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, that he lay down his life for his friends. You are my friends if you do what I command. I no longer call you servants because a servant does not know his master's business. Instead, I have called you friends. For everything that I learned from my father, I have made known to you. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last. Then the Father will give you whatever you ask in my name. This is my command. Love each other. I don't know if you um, remember back in the, probably the 1980s, Michael Ball sang that song from the musical, Love Changes Everything. And um, that was about uh, a relationship between a man and a woman rather than um, a more general kind of love. But the sentiment is the same. Love changes everything. If you think back to when you first fell in love, you know, and, and love isn't just that feeling in the pit of your stomach and when your heart races. Love is something much, much deeper than that. But we all have different experiences of love. We all have different ideas of what love is. Do you remember um, back in the day, the little cartoon of the black and white um, little girl and the little boy, and it always said, love is, and it might be giving your last Rolo, or you know, um, never having to say you're sorry is the one that always comes back to me. Love is never having to say you're sorry. Whether you believe that or not, um, Actually, if you, if you know someone really well, if you have a, a soulmate, if you like, um, who really, really understands you, sometimes words aren't even necessary. Sometimes we know somebody so well that just a look or uh, a glance, a word, just an unspoken understanding is there. Do you know what I mean? Have you experienced that? I can watch something on the television and know what Jim's thinking about it. I can watch something with Kirsty, my daughter, and we will say the same thing at the same time because we understand each other. We're very similar. So how much more is God's love Because God the Father loved Jesus, Jesus loves us. Jesus is the exact representation of God. He's not just a a watered-down image. He is the exact representation. He's the real deal. He is the authentic God in human form. And he loves us with the same love that the Father has for him. The same love that sent Jesus to take upon himself the sin of the world to reconcile us back to himself. How much love is that? Within the gospel reading, it says, greater love has no man than to lay down his life for his friend. Would you? Would you lay your life down for a friend?
Does anyone remember the name Gwen Mayer? Gwen was the teacher in Dunblane who put herself between the children and the gunman. She lost, lost her life along with 16 children. And who knows his motivation, but she put them first. She tried to save them. She laid down her life because she loved those children. But time has moved on. It's been 19 years. Nobody knows who Gwen is. But everyone knows who Andy Murray is, and he was in school that day in Dunblane. His life is a life of privilege. He's made uh, an impact on the world of tennis. What could those children have been? Did God love them any less? No. We don't know why these things happen. But what we do know is that God's love is consistent. God's love doesn't change. But because we don't reflect the same level of love, the world isn't as good as it could be. We had a general election this week, you might have seen. I don't know about you, but prior to the election, I was really getting quite fed up of politics. Because everybody is backbiting. We had a coalition government and all of a sudden the two people that were work working closest together for the last five years didn't have a good words to say about each other. How can that be? They must have spent so many hours close together, locked in rooms, dealing with really difficult situations, probably became very good friends. And yet, in the name of politics... It all fell apart. And Nick Clegg has paid the ultimate price, politically speaking. I wonder if there was a conversation between them that said, no hard feelings, mate, this is politics, it's just what you've got to do. What if politicians all pulled together and said, let's see what we agree on and do that? Can you imagine? It would be incredible, wouldn't it? How many politicians do you believe? Yeah. Does it mean they're bad people? No. Does it mean God loves them less? No. But we get into this situation time and again... I work in an office. I work in an office of a Christian organisation. We still have office politics. What is that? Where is my motivation in that? Where is the love in that? I'm not trying to make anyone feel bad here this morning. This is the message that God laid on my heart yesterday. And I'm like, you sure? He's yes. Okay. I'm being obedient to what he said to me. Love changes everything. If we loved everyone as God the Father, through Jesus the Son, loves us, we can change the world. We can start with our bit here, in our families. Families are important. When a member of our family is estranged or distant, it feels kind of wrong, doesn't it? And then time goes by and sometimes it's a lot harder to reconcile that. And it's just so sad that it seems that an opportunity has passed. But it's never too late. It's never too late. Love changes everything. Everybody is equal under God. And we are all flawed. I've done some stuff in my life I am not proud of. And I would hate for someone to stand up here and say, well, you're the one who. You know, like the newspapers do, the politicians have done, you know, all that finger pointing. I'd hate to be exposed in that way. But I'm sure there are areas in all our lives 
where we feel vulnerable because we think people would think less of us. People wouldn't like us. People would judge us because that's what we do. We don't always mean to do it. Sometimes we may just say something and then it's just too late. It's gone. Once you've spoken it, it's gone. There's that great verse in scripture that says that the overflow of the heart is where the mouth speaks. I'm paraphrasing now. But what comes out of our mouths is the overflow of our heart. So if we align ourselves with God, then we should be speaking peace. We should be speaking harmony. We should be speaking love. And then we would be displaying the fruit that Jesus talks about here. Fruit that will last. That fruit is love. Because when you do something selflessly for someone else, it changes things. There's something that happens when you put other people first. When you put yourself to the one side for the good of somebody else. When you think, this isn't about me. What does God want me to do? What would Jesus do? You know the WWJD. What would Jesus do in this situation? Would he backbite that person? No. No. He'd be the one standing with them. It's a great thing, isn't it? People in glass houses shouldn't throw stones. And we shouldn't. But we all do it. We all do it. But love changes everything. I I can't get it out of my mind since yesterday. Love. It's all about love. God is love. This is a love story. This is the best love story you will ever read. Because this brings us salvation. This reconciles us to God. This brings us eternal life. This isn't it. How disappointing if this is it. That we struggle and we strive every day and we go to work 9 till 5 or 8 till 6 or whenever it is. And that's all there is. Wouldn't that be a shame? But we can be with the Father, with Jesus, in heaven for all eternity. The best party ever there was. I don't know what that looks like. I have no idea what heaven looks like. Does it look like this, but with no tears and no hurt and no pain? I don't know. Are there golf clubs in heaven? I don't know. But what I do know is that when I really connect with God, when I really feel his presence, I want to stay there. I want to sit and be in God's presence. I want to have the kind of relationship with God where I know his will for a situation. And I'm not there yet by any means. But just as Jim and I know each other, just as we understand each other's sense of humour, and sometimes mine can be a little bit cruel. Um, I'll tell you about that later. We understand each other. And therefore, love is not having to say you're sorry, because we know each other's weaknesses. It doesn't mean we don't argue. Of course we do. I have yet to meet a married couple who don't, who agree on everything. I have met people who've tried to convince me they don't. But that's not real relationship. Relationship is being able to say what you think, to challenge, to debate, to share, to laugh, to cry. Do all those things together. And at the end of it, come out stronger, come through it stronger. If you hurt each other along the way, healing comes through love because love changes everything what is our motivation and where is the love in our lives what are we showing to other people and some people are easier to each of us to love than others that's because we're human we like some people more than others but this isn't about liking people this is about putting other people first whether we like them or not because that's what Jesus did He always put everyone else before himself.
but stayed in relationship with his father. That close relationship where he totally has the mind of God because he is God in flesh. And we now have that through the Holy Spirit. If we would just take the time to hear, to listen. Can you imagine what life would be like in the Middle East? If ISIS were motivated by love rather than hate and difference. We can pray for those situations. We can't imagine what it feels like to be in that situation. It's hard to understand how people can be motivated. But think about the little things that we do and say that hurt people. We may not mean to. We may not even realize we've done it. There'll be people sitting here now who've been hurt by other people in the room. If I've hurt anyone here, I'm sorry. I hold my hands up. Love changes everything. We are called to mirror Jesus. And the only way we can do that really is by loving people if we love people we don't need to quote scripture at them if we feed the hungry if we clothe the naked if we do all those things people will see the fruit people will want to know why would you do that for me why why would you do that for me I spent four years with Azalea going out on a Friday night taking homemade cakes to the women working the street of Luton. And they used to say, why do you do this for us? Nobody cares about us. But God cares. And because God cares, we care. It's like an impartation. You have to pass it on. Love is only something if you give it away. There's a song, isn't there? Love is only something if you give it away. And the more you give, the more you receive. And this isn't about, you know, it's, it feels very quiet in here. This isn't about making people feel guilty. This is about saying, we can change the world. There's a great story about a little boy or a little girl walking along the beach full of dying starfish and the child is throwing the starfish back in the sea one at a time and the mother says why are you doing that it's hopeless you cannot save the starfish and they say I can save this one I can save this one if we all do our bit we're throwing those starfish back in the sea I'm going to finish by reading something I heard a number of years ago. And it stuck with me. And um, the internet is a marvellous thing. I managed to find it because I couldn't remember the whole of it. Um, I don't know if this is a true story or something that's been made up as an example. (coughs) I don't know who wrote it. But I think it will illustrate what I'm trying to say. And then when I've read this, Josh is going to come back and lead us in another song of worship. Um, We'll take up the offering. And then what I'd really like to do today is have a time where we can pray for each other at the end. Just really connect with God in that way, if you feel that you'd like that today. The story goes... A young lady named Sally relates an experience she had in seminary class given by her teacher, Dr. Smith. She says Dr. Smith was known for his elaborate object lessons. 
One particular day, Sally walked into the seminary and knew they were in for a fun day. On the wall was a big target, and on a nearby table were many darts. Dr. Smith told the students to draw a picture of someone that they disliked or someone who had made them angry, and he would allow them to throw darts at the person's picture. Sally's girlfriend drew a picture of a girl who had stolen her boyfriend. Another friend drew a picture of his little brother. Sally drew a picture of her former friend, putting a great deal of detail into her drawing, even drawing pimples on her face. Sally was pleased at the overall effect she had achieved. The class lined up and began throwing darts. With much laughter and hilarity, some of the students threw their darts with such force that their targets were ripping apart. Sally looked forward to her turn and was filled with disappointment when Dr. Smith, because of time limits, asked the students to return to their seats. As Sally sat thinking about how angry she was because she didn't have a chance to throw any darts at her target, Dr. Smith began removing the target from the wall. Underneath the target was a picture of Jesus. A complete hush fell over the room as each student viewed the mangled picture of Jesus. Holes, jagged marks covered his face and his eyes were pierced. Dr. Smith said only these words, Inasmuch as ye have done it unto the least of these my brethren, ye have done it unto me. Matthew twenty-five forty. No other words were necessary. The tear-filled eyes of each student focused only on the picture of Christ. Maybe we should look for the Christ in people before we throw darts. <coughs> What is our motivation? Where is the love? Love changes everything. Thanks, Josh. <coughs>